Good day to you friends and followers, Ardrick here, and welcome to Wasteland 2. Uh, I actually meant to make this video a couple of days ago, the problem is, is I've been sick. And it has not been fun. I have not been able to talk. So, my videos weren't really going to happen. Um, so they give me plenty of time to play the game and to research the game while I'm at it. Which I'm glad I did. I actually made a new game. I was playing it for several hours, and found out that there's a lot of stuff that does not work the way that you naturally think that it would or that it should. So, with that being said, most people probably create their characters wrong. So, what I want to do is help people understand how to start the game and the best way to get started. And there's so many things that you can do wrong just at the character creation screen. And it's because of misrepresentation and you're being misled. So thing is, is you, if you play 4, which is now being out with, um, you know, a great abundance, so many people have played it, then you're used to certain things. And uh, this game is against those things. Um, I am not going to change the appearance of these characters. I'm just going to do this for the sake of showing you. The first character I'm going to create is going to be the leader of the group. Um, and we're going to call him... Who's a good assault rifle guy? Let's call him Norris. In honor of Chuck Norris. Alright. Yeah, whatever. None of this matters. You guys can do whatever you want here. Um, I'm going to change the portrait to something. I actually use this as my portrait. I'm going to go with that. Next. Now, this is the screen that's going to throw you for an absolute loop. Because you're going to look at this and you're going to look and say, am I playing EVE Online? There's so much shit here to look at. Um, the main thing is, is I'm going to go over the attributes right quick. Coordination mostly has to do with what you can do in battle. Uh, your chance to hit, as well as the amount of action points you're going to have to toy around with. Your luck is more or less completely pointless. Awareness is how quickly you're going to go in combat and how aware you are that someone's going to hit you in combat. Your strength is literally uh, one of the most important stats that you're going to see because it's going to affect not only your action point pool, uh, it also is naturally going to affect your uh, HP, your carry weight, and then um, it's going to affect when you level up how, my, how many hit points you're going to gain on those level ups. So it's something to keep in mind right off the bat as well. Your speed is going to go right back to being the whole, um, imagine pretty much taking uh, coordination and awareness and putting them together. And then intelligence is going to work off of how many skill points you gain. And charisma it literally has no major purpose except for two things. One is what it, you see on the screen right now. It's going to increase your leadership radius. That XP reward is absolutely useless. Don't even worry about that. Because it, it's there's no point. If I dump all these points into it and go to 10, and I gain that bonus in XP, it's going to mean absolutely nothing. Because all the other things I'm giving up in order to just get that XP means I'm a high-level idiot, more or less. I'm liked by everyone, but I'm an idiot. And what Charisma actually does outside of that is in the world you're going to meet other people. There's going to be, uh, I think, 15 total followers that you're going to meet. And uh, two of them are going to be extremely early on. You'll meet them in about your first probably hour of gameplay. Uh, one you're going to meet in this video. And nine of them will join you no matter what. They'll just come along and say, hey, you know, whatever, I'm along for the ride. Uh, six of them are going to say, if you're not charismatic enough, I'm not going to join you. So, the point of charisma is to have a combined total in your squad of a certain number in order to recruit the following uh, six people beyond that nine. And it's completely optional whether or not you want to do that. It, they're not worth it as far as their, their characters themselves. Um, I believe one of them, the best I remember uh, reading about, is really, really good. But do you really want to invest your points in that when you can just take one of the other characters and mold them to what you want. Uh, so I really I can't say that it's really something worth having. So no matter what, 
drop your character to one luck and one charisma because you're not going to want your primary character to have either one of those two stats. Uh, generally speaking, you want your strength to be at least four. And on every character, it's extremely important to choose between either eight intelligence or ten intelligence. The difference is how many action points you're going to gain per level. Because down here, if you'll notice, uh, if I go to four, or actually if I go to three, under derived stats, maybe your action points, your range chance, the bottom left, you'll see highlight skill points per level, two. If I go to four, you get three per level. If I go to eight, you're getting four skill points per level. If I go to nine, nothing. If I go to ten, five skill points per level. Now, there's a debate, I guess, over eight and ten. Um, I stuck all of mine at eight because only one skill point for those two attributes just seemed uh, a little painful to me. And what I did instead was I balanced out um, coordination and speed because combat initiative, the fourth stat down, which is the second one highlighted right now, uh, you want that to be at least ten on all of your characters in order to be able to go in a reasonable uh, quickness in battle. If it's too low, your characters are not going to be able to do anything. So you're going to want that combat initiative to be able to get in line um, and be able to do something. Now, this being your leader, uh, I strongly would recommend going with um, strength to five because at six, you'll gain more con, which if you see if I put this to six, you'll notice con per level goes, jumps to ten, or if I drop it to five, it drops back down to nine. But you're getting an attribute point at level ten, and you can throw that into strength, and it retroactively gives you all that con back. And in the meantime, you can put it into awareness, which will give you 11 combat initiative and 6 evasion. So as long as all of your stats are at least at 4 that are important, you're in good shape. Which, in all honesty, if you really wanted to do this, you could drop this to 4. And you could actually drop 2 points into intelligence. And in turn, when you hit level 10, <coughs> You could put this point back into strength, and uh, in, you would say, for instance, well, that's a bad example, because this only affects those. Uh, and you would go back to gaining that three base con, and then uh, I believe at level 20 or whatnot, you'll gain the other point. You can go back and retroactively gain all of that um, health as well. But that's entirely up to the user's choice. Um, this last point, I had a little bit of trouble figuring out where I was going to put uh, at first, and I went awareness, I think. No, I think I did go coordination then. I did go coordination. In fact, I may have gone four and six for the ten action. No, no, I did do it this way. It's been a little bit. This is how I did my leader. These are the stats I went with with him. And uh, I like the way it rounded out. Um, it being the four, uh, five, one, four, five, four, eight, one. And then with the combat skills, I you want to keep it very simple. You want no character to have more than four but you want to f uh, specialize and focus on three. And the primary one you want to go for is your weapon. I want assault rifles because uh, I didn't see any reason to have heavy weapons, no reason to have shotguns. Um, all the melee stuff seemed like it would be um, all focused on a different character. Submachine guns was just kind of like a math for me. I mean, why would we take a sub when I can have an assault rifle? Um, handguns I was going to give to my healer, which I'll focus on when I get to that. And, of course, I'm going to have my own sniper. And then energy weapons was the other one, but I did not think there would be any point early on. Uh, Fallout games generally don't give you energy weapons until a little bit later that I've seen. So I wasn't really sure how that was going to work out at the beginning and how easy it would be to get ammo. Because I noticed energy weapons, the ammo for those, are not as common as things like assault rifles and handguns. So I wanted to not have an issue with that because I'm someone that's very um, paranoid with ammunition. So if I see ammo, I usually pick it up. I'm really um, big on that, which if anybody saw my Fallout 4 playthrough, um, I really hoarded up 44s and 45s um, because uh, Kellogg's pistol was my primary that I wanted to use, and I just dumped a bunch of ammo in it. And uh, that's just the way I do things. Now, the other thing is that you're going to want to put uh, this at probably about 2 to start with. If you go Knowledge um, next which is going to be R1 here. Uh, I gave mine demolitions because you're going to want something outside of combat in order to help your character um, get experience besides just shooting things, which is um, 
your best way to start helping your character out early. And demolitions is one of the main things you're going to look for. Uh, computer science, demolitions, lock picking, and safe cracking are the four primary things that you're going to need your team to have. You can take toaster repair because there's some side things involved that um, you're going to want to pick up at some point just for uh, the sake of the XP or you want to check out some of the lore in the game or something nostalgic or, um, you know, the tie-ins and the innuendos and stuff. Alarm disarming, you don't need on your characters because one of the characters you pick up very early will already have alarm disarming. Point of fact, you will already have computer science. So you can actually wait on those two. Uh, mechanical repair uh, is another one that you may want to pick up relatively early, uh, but you don't need it right away. So we'll go demolitions here, and then general skills. Since this is the leader, I went with leadership. Uh, this gives you a radius at which people will come to you, or will not come to you, but they will around you gain a bonus to their hit chance and then the people who are not your base four people are considered um, your uh, C NPCs and they're your followers and they have a chance to just act on their own so if something happens and they get pissed off or whatever the case is then um, there's a chance they'll just do whatever they want to do they'll move on their own shoot on their own run away if they want to whatever the case is and leadership helps stop that um, I liked it because it gave you the chance to hit, and early on that is a very nice one to have. And then perception on your primary is a great thing. You're going to want perception no matter what. I just did it on my main character because that was great. I did make a mistake when I first created my character. Instead of putting any more points in the four that I chose, I actually picked up uh, Smartass. And I did it because I had read the dialogue options open up with it. To be honest with you, I found nothing that matters yet, and I'm fairly well into um, the part where I would imagine that it would at least come in handy. And so far it's just felt like a waste of time uh, and points. So I would literally put either perception to two or I would put well assault rifle is two. So to be honest with you, yes, I would put perception to two. And that's how I would start this character. Uh, Quirk-wise is entirely up to you. I chose no quirk on any of my characters. Um, this one's interesting because you get five skill points and one attribute point right off the bat at the start. And that's extremely nice, but you can't equip a trinket. And I'll be honest, though, the trinket that's available to you um, at any point in time is not a make-or-break situation. Uh, you don't absolutely have to have a trinket. But I don't know if it means this character can't equip a trinket or all around. I assume it's just this character. Um, let's see. Hard ass always succeed, which is pretty hilarious. Um, plus two base action points, which is really nice. Uh, one skill point uh, per level up after ten, but minus one before eleven. And if you're if you're at ten intelligence, this is actually the one you want because you're still going to gain those four no matter what. <clears throat> and then once you hit um, level 11 you're going to start gaining 6 and some of the abilities require 6 just to level up so every level you're guaranteed a skill level up to 9 and then from 9 to 10 requires 8 so um, it's it's just amazing that's uh, just an oddity to me um, I'm not going to read all of these because it's um, not really worth it there's a couple in here that are uh, plus 5% evasion with no leadership bonus gain is an interesting one too because you can do that and not have to worry about leadership for one of your characters and your sniper I think is the one that would be a really good one for that because uh, if your sniper gets hit or attacked then he has a chance to just evade the attack and he's not really going to be close enough to your leader most of the time anyway um, let's see this one's an interesting one. Unlucky. Chance for lightning to strike and shock a random target in combat. Uh, that's just weird. It's cool, but weird. Um, if you're drunk, you get a quirk. So I always chose no quirk. Uh, the animal husbandry one. Um, that one's cool if you want to do the animal whisperer one. But um, I don't know what the drawback is to that or anything. And that just seems kind of strange. But... Okay, 
there's your leader. Next, I chose my sniper. And I'll show how to do the sniper as well. Um, we're going to call you... Who's a famous sniper? We'll go Oswald. Don't hate me for this, by the way. This is just a, a joke. Um, all right, next. Okay, now when it comes to your sniper, then your same thing. You're going to drop out luck. You're going to drop out charisma. Uh, bump your intelligence to eight. And then you're going to bump your speed up to four, strength to four, awareness to four, and coordination to four. Except with this character, you either want to bring your coordination up or you want to bring your awareness up. Um, to be honest with you, I want to say I actually upped... I don't think it was this one. I think it was coordination. Because the action point pool. I'm pretty sure I put my coordination to six. And I left my intelligence at eight. I may have actually dropped... No, I had ten action points. So... Uh, this is what I ran with. I ran at 6144481 uh, because of the coordination bonus for the action points of 10 and then the 6% range chance to hit. Because your sniper, you want to have the bonus to hit. You want your sniper to be able to actually hit whatever he's aiming for and with little chance to miss. Now you go general skills, pick up sniper rifles, and two points into that. Then with knowledge, um, I gave mine um, safe cracking actually and then his secondary I don't think he had one initially he didn't he didn't have a secondary initially um, I actually dumped all of my points into sniper rifle I went stupidly far into sniper rifle with him but uh, what I would give otherwise is no actually I went computer science I take that back I did give him computer science but there was no point in doing it um, you really don't have to do that um, and then eventually I picked up toaster repair. So actually I'm going to go ahead and put a point into this. Uh, you will see one of toaster relatively early in the game. And it does make a difference there. Um, and in being able to get something out of it. So if we do that, then general skills. I'm fairly certain that there was there's nothing here that you, you have to have off the bat. Um, but if you want to get weaponsmithing, you can. Uh... Late, late, late in the game, if you, you're you going to need somebody that has weaponsmithing. Um, well, not late, late. I would say when you're a fair amount into the game, when you're when you're reaching closer to that level 20 mark, uh, you're going to want somebody that has um, weaponsmithing as well. Because one of the characters you pick up shortly will have weaponsmithing. And you're going to dump your uh, time and energy into leveling that weapon because it's already there and it's already leveled up. But you're going to want somebody else that has it too. Um, so, and the reason behind that, not to spoil anything, but some of your followers just don't stay with you forever. Uh, some things come up and things like that, and sometimes your choices will affect that. And I haven't reached that point yet, but I'm anticipating it. So, I know there's going to come a time when I'm going to have to take that character and just dump things into it. Um, safe cracking is really, really important. I would probably go ahead and put my second point there to start with. And then the two into sniper rifle. And then really, <coughs> excuse me, I would dump um, I would dump that last point into sniper rifle. And now, I'll touch on this too. You'll notice it says the perks down here. Uh, Watchman, focus shooter, combat shooter, zen shooter, and deadeye. Um, oh, also, to point something else out while I'm at it, um, I'll go ahead and touch on the perks first. Uh, those are not things you automatically get. And every four levels, you'll get a perk point. There'll be a list of perks that you can choose from. If you reach the diamonds on whichever ability you have, it's going to unlock that perk for you to purchase. So, for instance, at level three sniper rifle, once I hit level four, I can pick up Watchmen. So that's important to know that you don't just get those abilities. I thought it worked like that at first. So I was just like running around, yay, I have diamonds everywhere. Uh, no. Sorry, it doesn't work that way. Just doesn't happen. So that's important to to note as well. Now, the the important thing to to really pay attention to as you're leveling them up is at the bottom right here. You say chance to hit and critical chance. Now, when you level up, you'll notice it goes up by a five and four here, and again. So as you're leveling this up, you're going to get a base number increase to that. 
And then you're going to notice on the left here on your drive stats, you have a range chance to hit bonus and a critical hit chance. So that's going to play into whatever you are leveling up. So as it goes up, you're going to have that bonus as well. And I think I'm at nine sniper rifles right now, and it's a 100% chance, and then whatever the other is. So it gives me a you know, really, really great opportunity to hit people who are... Um, standing up and out of cover and things like that. And even those that are in cover, I have a reasonable amount. So it's a great way to um, keep track of that and see where you're at on it. Um, again, I went with no quirk for my sniper. And easiest character to make. Sniper is just an easy one. Now if you go um, the next one in line, I did a, uh, a brawler. I used that portrait. Actually, I used a different portrait on the other one, too, but... Oh, uh, uh... We'll call you... Uh... Lee. For Bruce Lee. Who also did lots of punching. Alright. Probably should need him Norris, huh? Oh, well. Again, drop your luck, and drop your charisma. You can't drop it to zero. That would be nice, but you can't do it. Intelligence straight to eight. This character's fun. I will tell you that much immediately. Four. Four. Strength straight to six. Now where you drop the last point is entirely up to you, but speed is key. Uh, that one point, if you'll notice, gives you a 1% evasion bonus and a one point into combat initiative. Absolutely awesome. Um, go over here. Brawling. Drop bring it immediately to three. If you'll notice down here, I'm going to drop it back to one. Actually, I'm going to drop it out. When you take it, you go straight to 65 and 11. Level two puts you at 70, 21, and level three puts you at 75, 31. Then you have a three-quarter chance to hit base. Then you have a 31% chance to crit. For every level, you need a 10% chance to crit. So, by the time you're done, your critical hit is through the roof. Uh, so in the vicinity of 100. So it's absolutely fantastic. Now, that character, this character is really easy to do as well. I have secondary, I went with Field Medic 1, which you're probably trying to figure out why, is because uh, it's good to have two healers. Just in the event that your first healer gets hurt, you're able to heal them, or if you're closer, or whatever the case is, it's nice to have field medic. Um, you're going to gain another surgeon. Uh, it's one of those first two people anyway. So don't worry about that just yet. Um, and you probably won't again have to worry about it at all anyway. And then lock picking. Lock picking is a great out of battle thing to have. For general skills, you don't actually need anything. Just no, you don't do anything. If you want to do brute force, that's up to you, but uh, one of the first characters you get has brute force, so there's not a lot of point there. I actually put two points in lot picking because it's one of those ones that you're going to use all the time. If you know anything about Fallout games, it's just pretty much constantly lot picking everything. So you're going to definitely want to keep that. I went no quirk again, and then finally you're going to have one more ranger, um, and you're going to want your healer. I'm going to name my healer House. Uh, that's not how you spell that. Oops. There we are. Portrait. Probably should change the portrait too. And the gender. So the portrait's correct. Uh, that looks good. We'll do that. Uh, appearance is good. Okay. Everything else is good. Next. No luck. No charisma. Eight intelligence. Now, this character is a tricky one because you're kind of in the middle of things with this character. You want them to be able to do what they need to do, but you also need, to be able to need them to be able to take a hit and to be able to move. So right away, take all your primary stats to four that you know, you're know you going to end up using. And then your last two, to be entirely honest, I believe I went with strength and coordination awareness I might have gone awareness with this one 
I know I did. I think I'm I'm fairly certain I went strength. I may have gone speed to be honest. I may have gone full. No, I didn't. I think that that's probably what I did. I think I went speed because I wanted the character to be able to go faster. And to be honest, though, you could drop out the speed and drop it up into coordination and attempt to go that route, or drop out strength and go six coordination for the extra action point, which is really nice. Um, but I believe that's where I went with it. Four one four five five eight one. So that seems like a pretty decent setup. Um, with this character, you're going to want Field Medic. I'd say two. You're going to want Surgeon one. And then under General Skills, you can choose another one if you want. Uh, if it were up to me, what I would do off the bat is either Animal Whisperer or Barter. Um, both of those serve a purpose. Animal Whisperer will get you a trophy later if you choose to do that. In fact, I think you'll get several trophies off of it, two or three anyway, if you choose to do that. You don't need to off the bat. Um, and then Barter um, as well. Oh, should probably tell you combat as well. Uh, that's going to be the most important thing. I went handgun. And the reason is, is because if you have to heal, you're going to have to be close. And handgun is close. And handguns are surprisingly effective. So having that, that handgun right at your disposal is definitely the way to go on that. Um, and then <coughs> for the final one, like I said, these two both. Barter is just phenomenal because you don't think it's going to matter. You don't think it's going to make that big of a difference because it's only 1%. But if you get it to 3 and you have Pawner, which is like 20% increase to the money you make when you sell junk, that's pretty phenomenal because you're going to get a lot of junk that sells between 5 and 10 uh, scraps. So imagine getting an extra, say, you know, 3 or 4 per. Doesn't sound like much. Um, or I'll say between two and three scrap um, per, but just anywhere in that area, even if it's just two, then it's a really, really big deal early on. Um, it becomes less important a little later on, but at first it does make a difference, especially uh, if you're buying guns and things like that, because they say 3% off of a gun, if you don't have a lot of money, it does does make a difference. And then when you're buying ammunition, it makes a difference. So it is something to keep in mind. Um, I believe if it were me redoing my character, though, in pure honesty, I would probably choose Animal Whisperer. Um, just because there's a lot of points at the beginning of the game where Animal Whisperer would probably be more efficient. So... I would probably go that route and just stick with that. And that's how I would start that character. No quirk, and done. So that's how these four characters would go. I would have my leader, who would have Demolition 1, Leadership 1, Perception 2, and Assault Rifle 2. Uh, the um, sniper, who would be running his sniper rifle as his main uh, dump for all of his skill points, with Safe Cracking and then Toaster Repair. Then I would have <coughs> my brawler, who would be focusing on brawling, along with field me medic and having lock picking. And then I would have my healer, who would be focusing on field medic and surgeon, along with handguns and ammo whisperer. Now, one reason you don't want to pour a lot of money into or a lot of points into field medic or surgeon is because you only need them when you're going to be completely and utterly in dire straits during the fight, because outside of a fight, you're going to be okay. And then. Um, when you're in a fight, you need to be able to defend yourself, um, especially early. And you're going to need something else to help you gain XP, which is why I chose Animal Whisperer, actually. Um, hoping that maybe you would have another angle to go in at that. Now, that being said, that would be my opening team. And I'm going to show you um, how to go about doing this. Also, the difficulty, right quick. I said to Rookie, if you've not played this yet, just to get a feel for it at least, until you understand the basics. Because if you put on anything above Rookie, it is going to beat the living crap out of you. And you're going to be aggravated. Um, I'm going to liken this game to XCOM a lot. 
because I played XCOM a lot. And there are a lot of things that mimic it, but they are different. And you're going to need to know how things work. There's certain things hidden that I didn't even realize how they worked or what they did. So as I started messing with them, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is here. And we're going to skip this. So let me double check something. Make sure that this audio, just to make sure here. Okay. Good, 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 good. Return to game. All right. <clears throat> and there's your team, who all look exactly the same. I'm not going to sit here and do all of this um, right now. I'm just going to click all of this, and you guys can, can mess with this when you get in the game yourself. Um, it doesn't matter what you choose here, just whatever the case is. I have a full team of clones. All right, close the logbook. It's going to tell you all that. Now, pick up the shovel. The shovel is invaluable to you. You will use the shovel forever. All right, close. Whatever you do, do not attempt to use the shovel on that. That would be bad. That's a friend of yours. Well, not a friend of yours. It's a friend of General Vargas, who is standing there talking to you, who's currently leading the Rangers. It is his friend's grave. You use a shovel on that, he'll be upset with you. Teaching you the camera controls, I will tell you more about the camera controls in a moment. There's a vendor right here. In the event that you need anything, this vendor has those things. Um, this radiation suit will eventually become very important. This leather jacket is something you want. Unfortunately, you're poor. You can't afford these things. Don't worry about it. This gun is actually one of the best guns for quite some time. Um, let's see, there's another one in here too you're going to need to know. This is an attachment mod, etc. Um, this ammunition you won't even need for a while. This ammunition you won't need for a while. Uh, use 38s like crazy. 45s you won't use for a while. A lot of the stuff you don't even need to worry about. Um, the one thing you'll have to just concern yourself with is eventually you're going to want this leather jacket. And you're going to want your brawler to have this jacket. But you'll be able to get your hands on those much later. Don't worry about it. So. We're going to go ahead and exit out of that. There's a little thing right here. Don't mess with it yet. You're going to want that goat to stay put. Now. The opportunity to see what your shovel does. It digs things up. Check that out, eh? All right, cool. Continue on in this direction, and you're going to see more rock piles. Uh, I suggest leaving your shovel on your main character, because he has perception. So having that, it's going to explain to you. Scrap is money, which is what this is. Great, sap gloves. This is a really cool find. I didn't have these for quite a while on my character. Um, you can choose to distribute, and it will actually choose the characters that need whatever you pick up and give it to them. So for instance, if I distribute, uh, I open up my inventory here with uh, the pressing down on the uh, touchpad, R1, to change my character over. It automatically gave him the sap gloves. He already has those equipped. I didn't realize having those equipped last time. Hmm. Oh well. Anyway. Whoop. Playing him. By using R1, you're able to uh, choose which character you're controlling. Um, one other thing I'll point out, too, that most people don't know, which is not immediately explained to you at all, is if you press L3, you can choose to manually move characters around. So I can choose this guy, put him over here. I can choose this one, put him over here. And then I can choose this one, put him over here. And we've created a box. Now, if I go back to my leader, whoop, that's a wall. If I go back to my leader and hit L3 and begin moving him, they all come back. That is extremely useful. Now, She's over here moaning on about her friend being dead. You're going to talk to her. Go through all this stuff with her. Be like, oh man, there's a lot of stuff going on. Oh, this is this is some craziness. If you don't pay attention to anything else, pay attention to Hellraiser. And then you'd be like, oh yeah, I'm done here. She's going to ask you if you want to 
uh, have her accompany you. For the love of all that is holy, choose yes. The reason why? Because you're level one. You're terrible. You're not any good at what you do. She's level seven. She will break the face of the things that are around you. Uh, if you are too over to her skill, well, actually her character, she has eight coordination. Pretty nice. Not the most intelligent in the box. Not the strongest, but she's coordinated as hell. She has hard ass three, assault rifle three, brute force three, two weapons smithing, two blunt weapons, and two outdoorsmen. So what matters out of that is brute force, because when you get to the AG center, which is going to be the first place you're going to end up going when you actually do quests, you need that brute force. Eventually, you're going to need hard ass four. Because that is going to give you uh, a dialogue option later in the game, and it's easy to go ahead and push her straight to four. This is great. It's actually a dialogue option involving her, and it's for a trophy. In a later video, I'll point that out, actually. Uh, in, she's already got three assault rifles, so she's already good at that. She has weapon smithing, which you're absolutely going to need, and outdoorsman, which is just awesome. Whenever she does manage to level up, I strongly suggest going either weaponsmithing or outdoorsman. Um, actually, point of fact, she'll gain four points, so both. Put one in weaponsmithing and one in outdoorsman. The reason being is because outdoorsman um, is going to allow you to avoid encounters. And you're probably thinking, why in the bloody hell would I want to do that early? Well, if you manage to level her up, and you get to outdoorsman uh, three, then it becomes valuable because you're able to um, avoid those early encounters and you're going to gain XP for doing it. It's around, I think, 12, which doesn't sound like much, but you can avoid 10 encounters and gain 120 XP. If you look at your character, you only need 300 XP to level up. It takes you maybe a minute to avoid probably, I don't know, 5, 6, anyway. So 5 minutes worth of work, you gain the majority of a level, because you're not going to be level 1 when it happens. Uh, that's the only real advantage to having an early outdoorsman, is you could actually start a character with level 3 outdoorsman, avoid encounters, and just power boost your characters up. But the character's going to be very crippled in the process. You could probably pull it off with your healer and not be absolutely uh, broken by it. Because you could take it out of, one out of field medic, one out of handgun, and then no animal whisper, dump the 3 points into that, and then just as you leveled up, because it'd be free, you could dump it into handgun and field medic again. But um, it just feels like you're wasting points that you could put somewhere else. But hey, if you don't want Animal Whisper, or if you don't have another use, or you just really want to start the game overpowered, then that's a really great option you can take. Um, not going to want to do that. Um, and the reason is going to be in a different video, which will probably be video number two to this. I'm going to try to help people understand how to level up and how to do what they need to do um, as they go along because uh, this game does hide a lot of things that you need to know early on so um, we need to to worry about that there's some 556 ammo which you're going to need there is actually a couple of mounds over this way if I'm not mistaken I just wasn't going to grab them um, there's one right here and I believe there's actually a box I think it's a box sitting on a bench or something like that. Got more 5.56 five, ammo. Let's see if it's over this way or if it's... No, it's over this way. And a good example. Examine everything. See, from right off the bat, you see there's a lock. So, this is a great opportunity to talk about something else. If you hit Start, or the Options button, I call it Start button, you can Quick Save. Use that all the frickin' time on everything. It makes a huge difference. He's at 91%. He could fail this and lock himself out. Well, there you go. But you can critically fail, lock yourself out. Granted, you can bash it down, but there's certain situations where you can't bash things down. And then if you open this, there's an M14 in there, which I think is equivalent to what you're using now. And there should be one more box back here somewhere, I think. Yep, right here. And it's got energy cells in it. How ironic that it's energy cells, of all things. 
I think last time it was uh, shotgun shells, which I didn't need. I did actually choose shotguns on my brawler the first time because I thought I was going to need uh, a longer range weapon, but I can honestly say that your brawler should not need that for the most part. You should be able to just power through everything. Um, whoop, wrong button. That was up. Alright, inventory. It's probably going to put it on her. It did. Comparatively, it is the same gun. So, that means square. Choose my leader. And then equip this as the primary. Already got a weapon upgrade. Good deal. So already we have... <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Still got that cold in the back of my throat. So effectively, we've already started the game with five characters. A weapon upgrade. And ammunition. So we're already ahead of where we should be. So, that being said, I will show you one more thing before uh, we get into uh, the next part of this um, tutorial uh, or this beginning help. Um, they're going to make sure that the radio is doing its thing, you're fine, etc, etc. So when it comes to storyline and all that, you guys can take the time on that yourself. Now, your map's going to look like this. <laughs> you're going to radio towers to your east, and that's all you know. You can choose to head south. And when you get down oh, combat, you can choose to run or attack. I'm going to attempt to run. Got it. All right. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to quick save. I'm going to show you why this quick save option is so nice. There should be an oasis coming up. Let's see? We're going to grab water at the oasis. Make sure on the bottom right is your cantina. There's water in it. There's 60 units. Um, eventually you can get more. Um, and then you're going to get a call. The AG center's under attack, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You need to go help them. You affirmative it. They give you the AG center, and then High Pool is under attack. So it's like, oh no, both places under attack. If you head south from here, if you look on your map, AG center's over there. Don't go that way. Go left. All right, I'm gonna try to run. Okay. Since it succeeded, I'm gonna quick save again. Quick saving takes no time at all. We're going to go ahead and say, oh no, the mine is in trouble. It's going to mark the mine. Whatever you do, do not go to the mine. The mine will kill you. Run. Alright, we're going to quick save again. Let 23 XP off that one. Uh, let's see, this is not... okay. It's been a little bit since... there we are. You're going to find the shrine. Go check out the shrine. Very easy to get to, uh, if you quick save um, intermittently, then you won't have to worry about fighting. You can actually get there completely without doing any combat whatsoever. I'm going to run up here, and then there's going to be a little bridge. Man, all these old cargo containers, <coughs> or old shipping containers. And there's this, use this. Yeah, leveling up, upgrading. There's a mysterious shrine. The pedestal on the shrine has an engraving which boldly declares Vetrex, preferable to its predecessors, superior to its successors. Which I think is, is a pretty great little thing. Okay. Now. Well, I'm going to go ahead and touch on this. To level up, you hit right on the D-pad. It'll bring this up. You confirm, and your characters will level up. Now. The yellow bars... Okay, well, this isn't showing me what I want to show you. The yellow bars are your experience. The green bars are obviously your HP. Below them are the yellow bars. That's your experience level. Um, as you can see, that shrine put you... That's not what I meant to do. I didn't mean to report. Um, I meant to do this. Uh, that XP went that far into level 2. And it, it's just it's a great way to start the game. So if you go skills, if you are 2 over to your skills, stick with what you have for now. Don't attempt more crap. It just isn't worth it. I would strongly suggest perception and assault rifles to get you started. You're going to want demolitions a little bit later on, but not right off the bat. Leadership, you can get by on three leadership for a long time. Um, the only reason really I even use it at the beginning is because of the 4% chance. Um, and you really don't want your people around you going rogue, and it's just a base 10% chance that they're not going to. So 
I like it having Angela uh, kind of near me because it gives her that 4%. And by both having assault rifles, you're both going to want to be about the same distance. So it gives you a good reason to sort of be near her. So let's do um, triangle will commit those points. As you can see, I have no perks yet because I'm not leveled up. These are all base perks that you can get. Uh, everybody can pick these up. It doesn't matter. Well, tactical positioning because he has three perception, but the other ones, I don't have anything on them. Uh, my favorites out of these are healthy because it's one column per level and it's retroactive. But wait until you're like 12 or 16 to get it because you're getting it like level four. You're only going to get four con out of it. And it's it just, yeah. I like hardened because it's one base armor. And armor in this game doesn't go stupid. It's not like, oh, there's you can get this which has one armor on it or this which has seven, so it's a huge upgrade. It's like there's this one and there's this two. You're going to want the two because it's twice as much as the one. Or there's five, well, no, not five, there's three, <clears throat> excuse me, or four. And, you know, the difference is you can buy the three for 350 bucks or you can buy the four for, like, 500 And, you know, you you have to balance it out because it's going to do that. And then later on, the higher your armor is, the more susceptible you are to energy weapons. And having this base armor is just very nice because you don't have to wear clunky armor to do it. And then uh, Powder Packer, I actually gave to Angela later on because you get 10% chance of finding bonus ammo. Like I said, I am paranoid with ammo. So that's a thing I did. Okay. With that being said... Let us leave here. And the final thing that I will touch on in this video is your next move. What you should be doing next. And how that's going to work is it's going to say quick save. You can hard save as well, it doesn't matter. Um, point of fact, uh, well, I'll just go ahead. The next thing you should do is go to AG Center. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to probably argue high pool. Um, you can go over there, but um, going to AG Center first, you get Rose. Rose is just great for everything. She stays with you as far as I'm aware until the end of the game, except at the very end of the game. So you'll you, her her abilities that she has, you're going to want um, with you because she has like alarm disarming. Uh, she has computer science. Uh, so, I mean, all that stuff that you really would like to have her off the bat, she's already got. So, there's no point in not having her. Also, um, high pool, if you go to AG first, AG's going to take a while. You're probably going to spend quite some time in AG, like three or four hours in, a in AG. And when, then when you go to high pool, it's like 15 minutes. So, pretty pretty easy stuff there. But, I'll show you the means by which to get a quick and easy trophy. This is really cool, actually. I don't know how far I'll make it before I get attacked. Right here. There's a cache right here. For the love of God, do not take all of these. You discover what looks to be a ton of buried video game cartridges. This is the ET cache. This is actually um, a reference to what happened, I think, in 83, 84, somewhere in that area, where Atari buried a bunch of um, extraterrestrial ET cartridges uh, out west. I don't remember what state it was. Um, I, I, my guess would be Nevada, because Area 51, and this being Nevada in the game, but who knows. Anyway, you're going to want one of these later on. Um, you can leave these here. Nothing will happen if you just choose to leave them. You can come and get them later. But if you go ahead and choose to go find this right now, there's a trophy for it. And uh, a lot of people don't know about that. These are absolutely worthless. The first time I played, I ran across these. I picked all of them up. Because I was like, oh my god, there's thousands of them. And there is. There's one, two, three, four, five, six by one... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, eight. So six times eight, is fifty-four. So there's what, fifty-four hundred of these things. I was like, I, I can make at least five thousand bucks right here. No, they're worthless. They, there's nothing, absolutely nothing that they sell for. 
can't be traded them, nothing. You need one cartridge to give to someone later in the game, and that's it. So uh, don't don't waste your time. And um, yeah, I failed on that combat, but that's the good news about um, the quick saving. I just wanted to show you where that was at, anyhow, and uh, how to go about getting that trophy. So. With that being said, that's how you create your character. That's the best way to go about starting your game. Uh, you know, when you first get into the game, go um, talk to Angela. Uh, get her in your party. Dig up a few things. You're going to start with a lockpicking skill. You're going to be able to get that door open. Um, if you fail that lockpicking skill, you don't quick save and all that. Angela can just knock the door down. So don't feel absolutely left out. Um, and then... Be sure to quick save. Quick save is your best friend in this game. You will use it way more than you think you will. Um, and then next thing is uh, when you get out, go check the shrine out. If you can see it on the map precisely, it's over here. So you're gonna come down. You're gonna go left. Uh, you're gonna get the you're gonna get the the signal that the mine needs help. You're gonna just distress call. Just keep going left. You'll find the shrine. And then if you want the trophy, go north. Uh, that's as simple as it can be. Do not go to that mine until you are above level 10. That mine will probably beat you in the face. So um, even at level 10, it, it scared me at first um, because I wasn't sure if I was able to handle it. Uh, luckily, I didn't get touched. But until then, there's a good chance you will because the creatures have, um, of the enemies... Or the critters, whatever, they have uh, 150 hit points. So it takes a bit to just wear those guys out. By then, my sniper was hitting for about 200, so it was in good shape. But I didn't know that it was going to be that easy, so I was still a little freaked out. But at any rate, avoid all that stuff. Get to the AG Center and start doing your stuff there. Um, if you need help at the AG Center or if anybody needs anything, let me know. I'll tell you there. And in the next video, I'm actually going to pick up after you do AG Center, and if you do a high pool or whatever, it doesn't really matter. High pool is kind of one of those afterthoughts. Um, I'll help you figure out what your next step is and what you need to do to kind of uh, get yourself a little bit better off. Um, because you can actually, after you get done with AG Center, go to high pool and then go to the radio tower and uh, continue doing all your main quest stuff. Um, and it'll all send you back to Ranger Citadel. And then the game really kind of opens up from there. So those three locations on the right there are going to be your your first primary objective. Um, and once you get done with AG Center, I mean, everything else is, is kind of cake because you're just going to get used to AG. You're going to think, oh, dear God, this game is going to be just a pain. But AG is by far the most aggravating part of it. Um, and so once you get past that, you're, you're pretty well golden um, for getting to the rest of the game, um, at least from what I've seen so far. Uh, I know there's a few things I've run into so far that have been pretty maddening, but I have not succumbed to anything yet. So I've been lucky about that. Um, at any rate, thanks guys for checking this out. Uh, like I, said, I just wanted to give you guys a pretty good idea of what you need to do to get um, off the ground and get started and figuring out what you're doing. Um, it's such a big help when you know uh, a good way to get started. And I'm not saying that my way is just the absolute right way to do things but it's a really really good genuine um you know way to get um started and to be able to say hey you know i uh i'm able to get my feet off the ground and i'm not going to die immediately you know i've already got another level under my belt i'll level up again relatively quick um, i've got a little more con than normal um you know th just the ability to to get started, to, to start doing things that you need to do. So I appreciate you guys for checking that out. Um, sorry for not tuned in right now because I'm getting ready to end it. But uh, that's just the beginning uh, way of getting, you know, well-rounded early. And in the next one, if you guys need any help with AG Center or anything like that, let me know. I'll help you as I can. But in the next video, I'll talk about after all that, how you can level up, how you can get money, how you can get your ammunition set up, how you can get your level set up and be set for the majority of the rest of the game. So thanks for guys for tuning in. I appreciate everybody checking it out. 
and I will see everybody in the next video. If you like it, please hit the like button. I appreciate it. All right, bye, guys.